Hello everyone, my name is Nick and I am your world champion and I hope you are doing well. Welcome back to this beautiful, ever so beautiful channel and I hope the world treats you well. How are you? How are you for real? How are you? So, as I am a big fan of trivia and a big fan of music and as I will continue to hold off any other content on this channel and as the next video essay is on the back burner, I decided that I think it would be good to, uh, to throw you 50 big, fat, assorted music facts that I think are pretty nifty. You know, next time you're at a barbecue and you're hanging out with some friends and there's a little dead moment in the conversation, am I right? You know, throw out one of these and you will surely get a conversation going. Some of them will make you say, and other ones will make you say, no way, I call bullshit on this one. So, without further ado, 50 fucking facts about music you didn't know until now. Or, like, somehow... Like, what if you did? What if you knew everything on this list? That would be- WHAT?! Joyner Lucas intentionally opened up his music video for I'm Not Racist with a white guy wearing a Make America Great Again hat, knowing that a good majority of the people weren't gonna know what he looked like and is what his voice sounded like. As soon as the video opens, Immediately, it's offensive. Immediately. Offensive to everybody because you don't know my voice because you've never heard me before. You're gonna think that this guy, and I think that's where the shock factor comes into play. Like, who is this motherfucker sitting here saying this shit, you know? And I knew that when writing. MF Doom would send out rappers to take his place for his set. Wearing the mask, the artists were dubbed as Doombots. Though fans found out, and some of them notably wanted refunds, other ones, just as many of them, felt like it was a good idea, and it's exactly what a supervillain would have done. I wholeheartedly agree with the idea that he should have done it. I thought it was sick. Redfu, who you might know as one half of the duo of LMFAO, most notably would be known for that party rock anthem and sexy and I know it. Believe it or not, has a co-write on Kendrick Lamar's King Kunta. Nirvana never once had a number one single, yet they had two number one albums. You know Joji produced Slow Dancing in the Dark on GarageBand? Prince played 27 different instruments on his debut album for you. The Rolling Stones became the first ever major international rock band to play in Cuba. They did it with over 100,000 people watching, and admission was free. It took place in 2016, the 54th year the band has been together. Grimes ate only spaghetti for over two years. Lord came up with the name of her single, Royals, when she was looking through the National Geographic magazine and saw a photo of third baseman George Brett signing baseballs. From there, it took its place, and she wrote the song within 30 minutes. The Beatles would masturbate together all in a circle. Jimi Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, Elvis Presley, all of the Beatles, and Taylor Swift never knew how to read music. It took Kendrick Lamar one year to write Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst. Ugh, let's get comfortable, you know? Let's just- Let's fucking relax, pull a- get- get yourself a fucking truly lemonade. Let's- let's just fucking relax, man, you know? You know? You know? I bet you didn't know this. Freddie Mercury recorded Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, how much would I like- <laughs> Freddie Mercury recorded Bohemian Rhapsody on the exact same piano Paul McCartney played Hey Jude on. Keith Richards snorted his father's ashes with a little bit of cocaine. It takes 15 hours to make a Grammy award. The award is made out of a special metal called Grammium. Billy Joe Armstrong's cat died in his washing machine. Axl Rose is an anagram for oral sex. On Ariana Grande's God is a Woman, the voice of God throughout the song is actually voiced by Madonna. Mariah Carey has leg and vocal cord insurance, costing over $70 million. I get it, right? I get it. Sister has killer vocals, you know? She only has to come out for one one month a year. She dethaws in November, and I mean, she, she freezes back up by January 1st, and we don't see her. We don't see her for the rest of the year, but, you know, Mariah, it's $70 million for that much. That's a lot. Have you ever wondered, hey, where did Nicki Minaj used to work at? <laughs> and I'm sure you've also wondered about some other odd jobs that some rappers have had. So I got you five, all right? <laughs> Speaking of Nicki Minaj, she used to work as a waitress at Red Lobster. Tyler, the creator, over the course of two years, worked at FedEx and Starbucks. 
Eminem and fellow D12 member Mr. Porter worked in the kitchen at Gilbert's Lodge. Machine Gun Kelly used to work at Chipotle. Logic and worked at Joe's Crab Shack. And B.O.B. worked as a sandwich artist at Subway. He also thinks the earth is flat. That is not... That is not one of the 50 facts, by the way. That's bonus number 51. How about that? Brandy and Ray J. I don't know why I put my hands up like this. I'm not... I'm not putting up pictures of them. Brandy and Ray J. Both are cousins with Snoop Dogg, who is also cousins with WWE superstar Sasha Banks. Shaquille O'Neal has released over four studio albums. I lean on a statue of liberty when I get tired. Dominic Fike produced his Don't Forget About Me demos while under house arrest. The EP gained so much traction that it started a bidding war between record companies. And Columbia Records came in with the $4 million check. He then went to jail for violating said house arrest. But, I mean, he's doing A-OK -okay now. In 2016, Mozart sold more CDs than Beyonce. Tyler the Creator and Childish Gambino, both voice characters in regular show. Blitz comment on the scene. You step to me and you're gonna get cream. Corn on the Okay. This be getting serious. You guys are delirious. Are you hearing this? Talking about positive things, but you ain't got no game. And it's plain to see you're strange to me, cause we be shining like diamonds. Y'all be petty cash. Not David Bowie's diet during the 70s consisted of milk, red peppers, and cocaine. Playboy Cardi played one game of high school basketball and dropped only five points. Fun's We Are Young's opening verse is way darker when you look at the lyrics on paper. It cites a man detailing his relationship with his significant other and how he's been abusive to her. Psy's Gangnam Style is actually a commentary on the high class life. Gangnam being a district in South Korea for the wealthy and privileged. Poking fun at their lifestyles throughout the entire song. Semi-Charmed Life is actually about a crystal meth induced bender. Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers is really about them doing heroin. Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen is actually about a Vietnam vet coping with his daily life and how it really holds him out, how he doesn't feel accepted into it. MF Doom voice acted on the Adult Swim show, Cheyenne Cinnamon and the Fantabulous Unicorn. It has the st it has this stupid Phenomenal. fucking name. Hold on. Cheyenne Cinnamon and the Fantabulous Unicorn of Sugartown Candy Fudge. I've never watched the show, and yeah, you can assume it probably went one season. Kevin Abstract started Brock Hampton on the Kanye to the fan form. Over 30 different people joined the form, and the only man that stays in the group since then is one of their producers, Jabari Manwa. Kurt Cobain once performed the intro to Rape Me and almost had Nirvana cut off of MTV. He killed the intro and performed Lithium, but as the story goes, was seconds away from the plug being pulled. Johnny Cash was the first American to learn about Joseph Stalin's death. He was monitoring the Soviet Morse code and relayed the info to everyone else. Ringo Starr was the original voice actor on Thomas the Tank Engine. That was my shit, but in the UK one, not in the US one. Eminem thought he had no chance during the 2003 Oscars, so he stayed home watching cartoons with Haley. He won the Oscar, but fell asleep watching cartoons with Haley. <laughs> Composer John Cage made this song called 433. It's this song that consists of only silence. Like, it's just like the room noise, because like pure silence isn't really a thing. The rapper Viper released 347 albums in one year. Allegedly... T-Pain's Buy You a Drank was written after T-Pain and a stranger were chatting it up for the night, and the stranger told T-Pain he was going to kill himself, and thus T-Pain bought him a drank, and that's where apparently the song could come from, but I don't know that for sure. It Also, I mean, yeah, it's just like a club banger, and he made it for the club people. It's also just, probably just that. Anthony Hopkins, aka Top Dog, once attempted to rob a chicken joint that Kendrick Lamar's father worked at. Top Dog spared his life, and that's the same Top Dog that went on to found Top Dog Entertainment, the same record label Kendrick Lamar is signed to. All of this, if you want to hear it, is on Kendrick Lamar's Duckworth. MC Hammer once had $30 million in his bank account. He then bought a $1 million house and 19 racehorses, and after all of that, filed for bankruptcy. Jay-Z was once an owner of the Brooklyn Nets NBA basketball team. And lastly, Kanye West didn't produce Devil in a New Dress. It was produced by Bink and Classic Mike Dean. And believe it or not, one year before it, the beat was used in a beat battle and lost. You can find the video on YouTube. 
So, folks, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope we had, I hope I was able to make you say, whoa, what now? That's crazy, dude. And uh, I hope, I hope for those of you that have dead moments in the conversation, you throw out one of these, all right? I'm looking out for you guys. <laughs> all right, y'all. Have a nice night. I'll see you later. I lean on a statue of Libby when I get tired. Then I punch her in the stomach. I don't give a heck. Hey, yo, why you pull the hooker like that? Yo, she breathes on my neck. Springsteen. S Springsteen. Oopsie.